everybody. How are you doing? All right, good. Right, this is it. The last notebook, the last race notebook of 2020. And we're going to have lots of people doing lots of photos and lots of end of season stuff. And well, take a deep breath. That was it. That was 2020. Even Mercedes, who got done by Red Bull today, are going out and having a photo just to celebrate the year. And wasn't that a a comprehensive win uh, for Red Bull. So Red Bull did a Mercedes on Mercedes, uh, as a Mercedes team member put it. They qualified on pole, they dominated the race and won. And yes, while it wasn't the most thrilling Grand Prix uh, in the world or this season, it was just good to get it all done because, you know, everyone's kind of been on tenterhooks all year, never quite sure whether something's going to happen that's going to derail the season, all the COVID precautions and everything like that. But um, actually, it was done, 17 races done and dusted, and there's lots to pick up on. So first of all, uh, I think you're going to see Valtteri Bottas. Here we go uh, with his partner, Tiffany Cromwell, in the most fantastically sparkly dress that my daughters would absolutely kill for. Um, uh, that dress is just lovely. And uh, Valtteri, you don't have to worry, a bit worry about uh, <laughs> pretending not to have a beer. I think uh, everybody will uh, will forgive you that. But um, yeah, it was, it was it was P2, wasn't it? For P2 for Valtteri Bottas. I think we're about to see Lewis Hamilton. So uh, uh, why don't I tell you what happens? Lewis Hamilton third, Valtteri Bottas second. And, well, Valtteri and Lewis held second and third behind Max Verstappen uh, after the start, but they both pitted um, under the safety car. And all that guaranteed was that they were going to stay second and third, and that's what they did. They trailed Max Verstappen home second and third. All right, it might have been an idea. Here's Carlos Sainz just coming behind you. Jack Aitken, poor Jack Aitken, not, uh, uh, not being able to. There's Carlos Sainz coming uh, behind you. You can see where he's going. Oh, apparently he's going to the stewards. This is the will he keep the place or won't he keep the place. Good luck in the stewards. Oh, you're not going to the stewards. No, if he was going to the stewards, he wouldn't be with Charlotte from, uh, from press. Uh, he'd be with uh, Paul James, the team manager. So uh, he's going somewhere else to do some press. Right. But, I mean, it turned out to be actually probably the right thing to do uh, for the race because there wasn't a subsequent safety car. There wasn't anything else uh, going on that, uh, that Mercedes could take advantage of. And at least it guaranteed it second and third. Yes, I think had Lewis Hamilton stayed out and then tried something a little bit later on fresher tyres, he might have been able uh, to, to, to do something different on the strategy. But in the end, it would probably have got the same thing. And actually, Hamilton, had he stayed out, might have lost fourth to Alex Albon. So difficult it is to overtake around here. I think you can hear the, uh, the cheers in the background. Sadly, we're still not allowed uh, in the pit lane because of COVID restrictions. Uh, I, uh, I hope and pray that will, uh, that will change uh, next year. And I'm expecting it to, uh, because even if the teams don't want us uh, pesky TV in there, we are going to press very hard to be in there because that is the, uh, the sharp end of Formula One. So uh, I hope that we'll get back in the pits. So I think clearly it was probably, you can see they're all coming back in. It's good. Um, it was clearly the right thing to do uh, for Strachey, but it was a bit of a gift for Red Bull Racing because it meant that Max Verstappen was effectively uh, unchallenged. Yes, they were nursing the MG UK on the reliability, but apparently it was worth a tenth per lap. Congratulations on the season uh, to all of them. Congratulations, Bono. So the MG UK nursing was worth a tenth. It cost them a tenth of a second per lap. And that's not very much. It doesn't explain why they were so much uh, slower than... Uh, uh, that doesn't explain why they were so much slower uh, than Red Bull Racing. It just seems that they couldn't get uh, their tyres into a position, a sweet spot, as they call them, that Red Bull Racing managed to do uh, today. That seems to explain it, because the MG UK loss, as I say, was only uh, a tenth of a second per lap. But um, they just weren't quick enough. And if that's a, uh, a sign of what's to come next year, well, A, I'd be surprised, because uh, cars aren't changing too much, uh, and B, we're going to have a very, very interesting championship, which will be good. Um, as for Lewis Hamilton, uh, he's, he's still getting over COVID. You know, he's tested negative, so he doesn't actually have it in the system anymore. But very physically, uh, he found it very tough today. He's still getting over it. He says he doesn't, you know, it's, it's absolutely serious. It's, it's knocked him sideways. He's had Angela Cullen, his trainer, back for today, which is good for him. But um, I thought that was an interesting comment he made about, about world leaders shrugging it off. Whoever could he have been... Speaking about Lee, but uh, he wasn't to be trumped today, was he? Lewis Hamilton uh, in uh, third position managed to break, uh, for, go through uh, what is clearly in physical, physically still struggling with the effects of, uh, of, of the coronavirus. Um, but uh, he managed to, uh, to complete the race, which was good to him. And Valtteri Bottas ended a four race long podium drought 
in second position. It looks like Bottas is going to hang on to the seat next year and fulfill his contract. It looks like it's not going to be a swap between George Russell, or at least not uh, anytime soon, um, although strange things have happened in Formula One. It looks like Toto Wolff really just wants to, to honor his contracts, put his arm around, encourage Valtteri Bottas. They start again from nothing uh, at the beginning of next year in March 21st in, in Melbourne, and they're going to try and make it work for Valtteri Bottas. They're not going to put George Russell in the car. Um, what else do I have to tell you about? Uh, oh, yeah, the Silverstone Straight, the uh, Lewis Hamilton, has now been named after the main straight. There's Seb handing out the beers in, uh, over there. It's, can you see it, Lee? Yeah, you can see it. Um, and the other thing I was going to tell you about was um, DAS, the Mercedes DAS system. So this was the last race for Mercedes dual axis steering. And um, I actually went up to the Merck factory um, and saw, and they showed me how it worked. So um, we might show a piece, might try and do a piece next year, now that the DAS system has had its final race. But at least I'm allowed to tell you how it works. So it is indeed a um, adjustable tow system for the tire. And the problem it solves is that they found that on, they built this Mercedes essentially to be kind on its tires. Now, when they need, but there were times when they needed to warm up the front tires. Rear tires, not a problem. You can do a few burnouts and that's done. But the front tires, more tricky. So what somebody very clever in the performance group and the mechanical engineering group came up with, he thought, I wonder if we can sort of persuade the front tires that they're doing more, more corners than they're actually doing. They thought, well, we could do that if we can just change the toe angle of the, uh, of the front tires. And they do that mechanically. It's quite an interesting system. So they have a button on the inside of the steering wheel around the sort of middle finger. That enables the system. Then there's the steering column. And then there's a hydraulic manifold that goes in and out. And when the driver presses that button, he can move the steering wheel in and out. And what that does is displace fluid, hydraulic fluid, along a, a, a flexible hydraulic line, which goes from that hydraulic manifold to all the way down the steering column to a piston. And there's a piston on the steering rack, effectively, that goes in and out. And that moves two rockers, a bit like the rockers you get on a suspension system, that push the steering arms or the track rods in and out like that and pulls the toe of the tire in and out. And that's what exercises the front tires and keeps them, gets them nicely warmed up in preparation for a safety car restart or a qualifying lap. So that is DAS, uh, and, um, but we've, we've, uh, we hope to show you uh, a feature of actually how it works physically and have it in um, uh, later in uh, maybe uh, next year, something to look forward to. Right, Ferrari, and uh, well, not a great day for them because they haven't scored any points, but they dropped down in constructors. So Mercedes, of course, uh, are constructors champions, uh, but you knew that already. Ferrari dropped down in the Constructors from second to sixth, which uh, just sort of sums up their disappointing season. But uh, Sebastian Vettel was 14th today, Charles Leclerc 13th. And it was very clear that Sebastian Vettel was driving for Sebastian Vettel tonight. He held off Charles Leclerc, even though Leclerc was on uh, softer tyres, and but wouldn't let him pass. Why should he? Leclerc didn't really try to overtake in any kind of massively convincing way, but uh, couldn't get past in any case. Uh, Vettel, they both stayed out under the safety car. Um, Charles Leclerc then got done by Esteban Ocon and pitted on lap 23 uh, and made his way back through slowly, but Sebastian Vettel stayed out and um, held up a few people. Then he pitted a bit later on, uh, much later on in fact, rejoined behind Leclerc. Uh, so that didn't work out for him at the in the end and he was P14. But he finished with a song. Um, and I don't know what the song was. They're all wearing their, uh, their Sebastian Vettel masks, you can see here. Um, I might just sort of quickly ask uh, the uh, Sylvia Hoffer, the uh, estimable uh, press person from Ferrari, what the song was. Was it a special Ferrari song that Sebastian s sang at the end, Sylvia? Uh, Do you know? Italian. It's a special Italian song. Right. Yes, it is called Azzurro. I'm not gonna sing that. Be <laughs> <Azzurro. Okay. laughs> but we have uh, special masks for you. Well, that's very kind. Thank you very much. Look, it even says Sky UK on it. I'll pick it up later. Thank you very much, Sylvia. It's very nice to you. OK, so it's the Azuro song that Sebastian was singing. And he learnt it off by heart. Um, I don't know if he knew it already. Had he known that Azuro song already? Mara, the song that Seb sang on the radio afterwards. Very famous. Oh, dear. I'm sorry. I feel bad for not knowing it now. I don't know the Azuro song. Anyway, it was brilliant. It was, it was a, good, a good minute and a half long. Very famous. Very old and very famous. Oh, dear. Is it like our version of, I don't know. Oh dear, I feel bad now. 
don't complain. I just didn't know. All right, it's the Azuro song. But listen, that was a lovely way uh, for Sebastian Vettel uh, to go out. Um, we'll miss you in the garage. He said afterwards, guys, I'll miss you in the garage. Uh, he didn't say I'll miss you, Mattia Binotto, uh, to, uh, to, <laughs> to the guy, effectively the guy that uh, sacked him. But um, yeah, Binotto not here. Maybe he felt it was uh, the right thing to do not to be here on Seb's last race. But quite emotional, uh, Seb leaving Ferrari. Right, constructors, that's up one point in the constructors for Red Bull. They're up to P2, of course. Max Verstappen won the race today. Alex Albon was fourth. A great start by Max Verstappen. He pulled out a two seconds lead, did pit under the safety car with the Mercedes and never looked like being caught by Valtteri Bottas. Really enjoyable race, he said. Absolutely dominant. Um, and uh, well, congratulations. They win the race. Honda wins the race. And uh, it's a nice way to go out for, um, for uh, uh, Honda, even though they will be here next year, of course. As for Alex Albon, but you know, the, you've got to say the end of a sensational year for, for Max Verstappen. He's driven absolutely brilliantly. There is Alex Albon. He's driven well too. And he's been just a credit to the team, Alex Albon. And, um, and I hope, you've, hope you have a nice little celebration. I said you've been a credit to the team. So, so you know, thanks very much. Well done. Um, but he's just, uh, you know, he's a, lovely, he's a lovely guy and we can only hope for the best for uh, whatever the future holds uh, for Alex Albon. We are expecting an announcement maybe tomorrow. Uh, or maybe in the next coming week that, well, we're expecting they're going to announce that Sergio Perez has joined the team um, and that Alex Albon is staying on at the team as a, you know, test and reserve driver. And maybe they might even share the drive next year. But it does look like uh, Christian Horner and Helmut Marko have managed to convince Dietrich Mateschitz, uh, the Red Bull boss, who wanted to keep, wanted to keep the faith with uh, Alex Albon uh, to sign Sergio Perez. It seems like uh, there's nothing to lose. Maybe they've taken our advice. Um, they might as well sign Checo on a one-year deal or whatever, see how it goes. And if it doesn't, or if he's not happy or it can't, do the job they want them to do. They've always got Alex Albon uh, in reserve. It seems like a sort of elegant solution. That seems like what is going to happen. But it was nice to see Pedals, uh, Paul Monaghan on the podium. First time since 2014 that he has been up there. Uh, there is Lewis Hamilton. I don't know if you want to follow those camera crews down, if you want to have a look at him, car signs, whatever you want to do. I'll tell you about Paul Monaghan. Uh, the reason he's called Pedals is because when he used to work for McLaren, um, all he did was design and then redesign pedals for Gerhard Berger, who was famously fastidious about his pedals and wanted them uh, redesigned Every, every race, and it was uh, fell to Paul Monaghan when he was at McLaren to uh, to, to to do those um, uh, redesigns for Gerhard Berger, and that's why he's been called Pedals ever since. But uh, what else can we say from Red Bull? Not really anything. I mean, it was uh, it was okay for Alex Albon. He, he closed up past Lando Norris of P4 and more or less stayed there. He closed up on Lewis Hamilton, but couldn't pass him and finished 1.5 seconds uh, behind uh, the world champion did Albon in fourth. And we'll see what happens uh, after. After that. Right, McLaren, let's follow Carlos Sainz down to McLaren, where the celebrations should be uh, in full swing, because pending any kind of terrible disqualification for Carlos Sainz for driving too slowly, unnecessarily slowly uh, in the pit lane while he's waiting to stack, going in for a pit stop and delaying Lance Stroll, they have secured P3 in the constructors, which, when you consider that they don't have the third fastest car in Formula One, is great going. I mean, Lance, uh, sorry, C Carlos and Lando have spent more or less all season saying, look, we've got at best probably the fourth fastest car in Formula One and sometimes the fifth. Um, and, and it's the execution of our races that's been really, really great. And that was it today, wasn't it? It was after a very, very strong, uh, well-executed qualifying. They had a well-executed race. Lando Norris got overtaken by Alex Albon at the start, but held on to P5 once Daniel Ricciardo pitted. And uh, Carlos Sainz kept P6 ahead of Daniel Ricciardo. Under, uh, he is under investigation for going unnecessarily slowly. Even if that gets a five-second penalty, he won't change his position. If he gets 10 second penalty, he won't change his position either. But uh, they seem to be the two most likely penalties if something happens. But it might not even happen. They might not even see, having studied the uh, telemetry, that he was going unnecessarily slowly. So we will see how that goes. But at the moment, they are up one place in the constructors to third and all the uh, riches that come with that. So well done, everybody at Woking. Good to see McLaren getting uh, where they belong back in the top three of the constructors. Great stuff. Right, Renault. We'll do Renault and then we'll take a break. Um, and uh, we have. P, they're well, they're, they're equal. They're a bit disappointed here, actually. It's P5 in the uh, in the constructors. 
which is where they were last year. And Daniel Ricciardo, P7, but he's fifth in the Drivers' Championship, which is pretty good for him. Uh, Esteban Ocon finished ninth today, and uh, they uh, tried to get Daniel Ricciardo. They said, um, they said uh, give, we've got to give it everything we got before the race, and he did. He stayed out at the safety car restart. Uh, at the safety car, he held P5, held off Lando Norris, which was very good. But then Esteban Ocon, he pitted under the safety car, rejoined in the Sebastian Vettel train and lost a huge amount of time, not only to Daniel Ricciardo, his teammate, but to a lot of other, his other competitors as well. So it was being stuck behind uh, uh, the, in Sebastian Vettel that really did it for... Um, uh, for Esteban Ocon, but Ricardo pitted, and that allowed Ricardo to pit and then come out behind the McLarens and be P7. So he rejoined P7 and uh, stayed there. So bye bye, Daniel Ricardo as he goes to uh, McLaren next year. But just before we go to a break, uh, seeing as Honda have uh, won the race today in the hands of Max Verstappen, we thought we'd show you the traditional Japanese bento box Christmas lunch or dinner, which is, um, well, it's fried chicken essentially. And uh, here's Dave, and the chef. you have to have a Kirin beer. Well, thank you very much, Dave. Not when I'm, not when I'm working, but maybe oh, after. Oh, anyway. Okay, cheers. But uh, yes, Dave has very nicely done a, um, a, uh, a fried chicken, which is the Japanese, traditional Japanese. KFC, uh, that's what they have at okay. Christmas Day. Excellent, brilliant. So thanks very much Enjoy for that, there, Dave. A nice, a nice little tribute to Honda, who have won the race uh, today. Right, we're going to take a break. More notebook, and I'm not sure how much of that KFC and, and sushi I'll be able to eat in the break, but uh, more notebook in a bit. Hi, uh, welcome back to the notebook for the season ending 2020 uh, Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. And I had to put my specs on to see what this is all about. It looks from bento boxes, we go to um, what looks like the scene of some sort of weird dream um, with a, a car turning into a moose, with another moose doing a front wing change and another moose with a sort of spanner. But apparently it's moose. Master Crafter Art Competition. The piece illustrates an F1 race set in the middle of a dry desert in Abu Dhabi with a, both a moose and a bull as a support team. Okay, that's exactly what it is. The driver himself is a combination between a bull and a Taurus with a sign that says, representing the lofty ambitions of Alpha Tauri. Okay, this gets sillier and sillier. With a moose which signifies confidence and encouragement. Even though both are from totally different roots and backgrounds, what, the moose and the Taurus? Uh, they share the same dream with passion and fascination. Their collaboration together as one leads to great success. Good. What about the camel and the donkey? Where does that come in? Um, well, it was good success. It was great success for Pierre Gasly. That was worth it, wasn't it? Uh, it was great success for Pierre Gasly today, who was P8. Uh, and uh, a great turnaround from qualifying, because Kvyat was seventh in qualifying, but it's a horrible race for, for Danny Kvyat, poor him. And they go down one place to seventh in the constructors, Alpha Tauri. Gasly fought with Ocon early on. Then he closed on Danny Kvyat, who was struggling with his tyres. Lance Stroll and Gasly got past Danny Kvyat, which was absolutely crucial for Gasly to pass Sebastian Vettel so that he wasn't held up, which he did. And then Danny Kvyat's ru race was ruined because when he pitted uh, under the safety car, he rejoined behind Sebastian Vettel, who stayed out. He, that was the Vettel train and then dropped poor Danny Kvyat on what potentially looks like his last race with the Moose team, I mean, sorry, Alpha Tauri, uh, to P11 and very, very unhappy, really uh, unfortunate from a great qualifying position, but very good for Gasly. Uh, having uh, qualified outside the uh, top 10, he finished P8 today, which was uh, was really good for the guy who is staying with uh, with Team Moose into, um, into next year. Right, commiserations to everybody here at Racing Point, because even though they're up uh, one, two, three, four, Four, no, three places in the constructors to P4 in the constructors, which is great for them. It's not the P3 that they wanted and maybe they felt they deserved today. It was a DNF for Checo Perez, even though Checo Perez, Sergio Perez, finishes fourth in the Drivers' Championship behind Verstappen, Bottas and, uh, and Lewis Hamilton. So uh, all credit to Checo Perez, uh, of course, secured by that race win. But that is an immense uh, performance considering here he is, Lee, considering that he, uh, he missed two races. Uh, with uh, the dreaded coronavirus. So um, uh, that is amazing performance by Checo Perez personally, but it was a DNF today with, uh, with uh, a transmission problem. Great start, uh, decent start for both. Lance Stroll got past Danny Kvyat, um, but was uh, backed up by Carlos Sainz in the, in the pits and lost time. He rejoined behind Sebastian Vettel, did Lance Stroll, and that really put pay to his race. Uh, he managed to get past, uh, he was, no, he was overtaken by Gasly uh, towards the end of the race on lap 30. He was complaining about no traction, very bad traction, and uh, dropped down in the end to, uh, to P10 behind Gasly. Uh, and, 
whoever is in night, who is Esteban Ocon. So that's really disappointing for Lance Stroll. And for oh, poor Sergio Perez, starting for them back with an engine penalty. It was all going so well, but he was moving up the field, but then uh, retired, as I said, with a, uh, a mechanical problem. So uh, Lance, Lance's power unit was uh, running a bit down anyway. But uh, yeah, they say they bid goodbye to, uh, to, to Checo Perez um, with a with a with a thanks, and uh, let's see where 2021 takes you. The 2021 Aston Martin is being developed from this year's car. Just in case you're wondering, they don't take, uh, let's call it interpretation or inspiration from this year's Mercedes and then just copy that. Uh, they're just developing their own car from now on our uh, Aston Martin, but we expect to see them next year in green, green and pink next year, Otmar, or green. Who knows? Only 96 days to find out, eh? Good. Well, I look forward. In Switzerland, what do they say in Switzerland? Yes. Right. There's snow in November. There's Christmas in December. Yes, quite right, Otmar. So uh, listen, I'm sorry about. Uh, do we have a result on the science investigation yet? No, not yet. The only just thing is he gets thrown out. The only just thing is that he gets thrown out. Does that mean that you get P3? No. Okay. All right. Well, let's see. Uh, let's see what happens. Um, obviously, uh, yeah. That's. Uh, we'll see what happens. But check skysports.com/f1 uh, for uh, for the result of that. Um, but we're not expecting science to be uh, thrown out. Alfa Romeo Sauber. Uh, well, he might get a penalty, but I'm not expecting him to go get, get thrown out. Alfa Romeo Sauber, eighth in the Constructors' Championship, which is where they were this year. Kimi Raikkonen, 12th. Antonio Giovinazzi, 16th. Kimi Raikkonen well, ran well in P13. He did pit under the safety car, whereas Giovinazzi stayed out and pitted on lap 29. Giovinazzi was chasing down George Russell towards the end, but couldn't get him and ended up just 1.3 seconds behind uh, the Williams driver at the end. Kimi Raikkonen was pretty good today, actually. Really good pace. Pitted under the safety car, beat Charles Leclerc and Sebastian Vettel, and only finished two seconds off Danny Kvyat for P11. So uh, a great, actually, final race of 2020 uh, for the Kimster, uh, by far now the oldest driver in the field. So that was really good stuff. A better car is needed at Alfa Romeo Sauber. Uh, we have Callum Eilert and Mick Schumacher looking at me like I'm a complete idiot, but um, uh, this is just what I do. Hello, boys. You're right. Are you, why are you looking at me like I'm a complete, wondering what I'm doing? We're studying you. We're studying me, right. Okay, well, it's, it's, the lights got so low, I've had to put my specs on. So uh, this is all a bit awkward, isn't it? Um, uh, I'll tell you what happened with Haas today. Kevin Magnussen was 18th, uh, and uh, it was, Pietro Fittipaldi was 19th, and uh, it was all a matter of, you know, thanks very much and for all the fish and goodbye. Um, Kevin Magnussen stayed out on hard tyres until lap 33, pitted again onto medium, but he pitted again on lap 49, so that it gives him some soft tyres uh, towards the end of the race because uh, that was going to be um, good, good fun for him. Uh, I've got to rush, rush through this, I think. Um, we always have a chance with... I've uh, got a minute 30, that's good. Got a minute, we always had a chance with the use that the team said to, de to uh, K-Mag. And um, on Fittipaldi's car, they had an engine air leak, which they had to pit twice for him. But he said, thanks for the opportunity. And Fittipaldi has done an absolutely brilliant job deputising for Roman Grosjean. Bye-bye, Roman Grosjean. Hope you're OK uh, and uh, recovering well from um, that hor horrific accident in Bahrain. But uh, that was it for Roman Grosjean Formula One, it seems. And goodbye, Pietro Fittipaldi. We'll see what happens with him as well. And good luck to Kevin Magnussen racing sports cars in the USA. Right, finally, uh, they were ninth. They stay where they are, Haas, in... Uh, in the constructors, they're ninth, and Williams are tenth. George Russell, fifteenth. Nicholas Latifi, seventeenth, and a memorable first year for Nicholas Latifi. He thanked the team on the radio, but uh, he had early problems with brakes. The car was all over the place. Settled down. George Russell held P15 despite Giovinazzi pushing him on uh, 17 lap younger tyres. But uh, Latifi two stopped. Uh, didn't matter in the end, uh, doing the extra stop because he held his position, and they finished fifteenth and seventeenth. Right, and that is it. Um, as we see, uh, a mechanic getting into the uh, into the swing of things with the uh, with the old hats. Um, check. Uh, we'll be around for the young driver test, so check skysports.com slash F1 on the website for all the uh, tales of Fernando Alonso and everybody on the website. Uh, and we will see you for 2021 testing on the 2nd, 3rd and 4th of March, and then the Australian Grand Prix on the 21st of March next year. The day belongs to Max Verstappen, but the year belongs to Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in 2021. Have a great Christmas, and uh, look after yourselves. Bye-bye. Sky Sports. Feel it all.